Hi everyone, thank you for joining me for these fun summertime cards. Typically, we don't associate making multiple cards with watercolor, but our thinking is about to shift with these cards featuring Simon Says Stamps Big and Bold, a suitable name for these fabulous sentiments. They pop on these softly watercolored backgrounds working with Canson XL watercolor paper and honestly I chose it because it was my longest paper just under 12 inches. Low tack painters tape holds my paper to my work surface to help reduce warping. This is a simple scene consisting of three sections the sky, sea and beach. Working with Mission Gold watercolors I'm going to begin with the sky. I've masked off the horizon between the sky and the sea. Each of my three sections will begin with a wet on dry technique, which simply means a wet brush put to dry paper. I'm creating color washes. For the sky, I started at the top of the paper, applying my paint, and then introduce water about halfway down to help soften that color as it works its way to the horizon. Next, the beach is painted. I'm introducing an ochre color and I'll also add in a little bit of brown to help tone it down. The paint is applied to the dry paper following the painter's tape at the bottom of the panel. And like the sky, water is introduced to soften it out as I work upwards about halfway through this section. Next, the painter's tape is removed from the middle of the panel. Then I'm going to take my paintbrush with a little bit of water and just soften that line of horizon just a bit. I'm using my heat tool to dry this section. I don't want any of the paint bleeding from the sea to the sky. The sea is going to be painted with a color called Viridian. This is kind of a turquoise color, but it leans a little bit more towards the green. Almost all of the painting in this piece is being done with a number eight round paintbrush. This is my go-to for almost all of my watercolor work. Again, using a wet on dry technique, the Viridian is applied right at the line of the horizon. I'm going to work downwards from this band of color towards the beach. I apply sections of water and then introduce a little bit of color to each one. As I'm working, I make sure to leave some thin bands of white space. This will help create the illusion of movement in the water. Go back up to the line of the horizon, introducing just a little bit more color as I work my way down through the panel to help create further definition. So this is the basics of the beach scene and now I'm going to thoroughly dry my panel with the heat tool. And I'm just lightly tapping my panel. I don't want any finger marks in there, but I'm actually checking for the temperature. If it feels cool, there's still moisture. If it's room temperature, it's dry. Now that the panel is dry, I'm going to take a liner brush and some brown paint and just draw a line to define the beach a little bit more from the sea. Then back to my number eight brush and I'm just going to add some water to help soften that line just a little bit. The C section of the panel is dry and so I can add in some additional color and create further depth. The waves are going to come alive with some opaque paint. I'm using white gouache, but another good choice is Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. The white paint is being applied where the beach meets the water, and it will also be used to help define the waves that are out in the sea. Mm -hmm. 
I apply the paint in short strokes and also pouncing motions. This marks the beginning of creating sea foam, which really emphasizes the movement of the water. I'm looking for all of those natural horizontal white lines that have been created in the color wash and then going in with the white paint and enhancing them. Now I'm going to be using a specialty brush that is called a stippler. Using a pouncing motion, I'm going to apply the gouache again over top of the white paint that I've already applied. This brush gives lots of texture to the sea foam. The paint is applied at least a couple of times over the crest of those waves and it really makes them come to life. The white looks a little bit stark, but as it dries, it does soften. I finished up by protecting the sea in the sky with some paper and spattering on some dark brown paint over the sand lightly. Of course, you can leave your panel to dry naturally, but I wanted to get these cards done and so I finished up with a heat tool. And when the panel was dry, I cut it down to three panels that measured three and three quarter inches by five inches. I've chosen three different sentiments from the Big and Bold stamp set. I'm using black VersaFine ink and applying the ink three times to get a nice solid black image. As the name of this stamp set suggests, these sentiments are big and bold, and I find that using a pressure tool helps me to get a good impression. After I've stamped each sentiment, I coat it with clear embossing powder. On the sidelines, my heat tool is coming up to full temperature, and then I apply the heat to all of the panels at the same time. It's good and hot, and that helps to minimize the warping. All of the panels are going to be adhered to black mats that measure four inches by five and a quarter inches. Even though the edges of the panel were taped down during the watercoloring, I still ended up with a little bit of warping. And so as I put them on their black mats, I'm putting it under some weight to help flatten it out. When I think about summertime, I picture Adirondack chairs in front of the water. And what could be more summery than three Adirondack chairs in colors of citrus, yellow, orange, and green? This sweet die set comes with two dies, one that cuts the chair, and then another that cuts parts of the chair so that it can be given some dimension. I cut the full chair once and then the parts two times. I used just one back of the chair and it was adhered first to the full chair. I used two die cuts of the seat of the chair and those were adhered next. I'm also adding on two of the cross pieces between the legs. Finally, I add on two of the armrests on each side of the chair. I did not use the cross piece for the top of the chair back. The panels were adhered to top folding card bases that were A2 sized. Simon has introduced some micro dot adhesive sheets and these work particularly well with fine die cuts. I'm going to be incorporating a summer die cut from the Four Seasons die set is a fine die cut and also I want to curve it so this is a good opportunity for me to try out this sheet adhesive. The sentiment is going to be die cut from the same cardstock that was used to create the Adirondack chairs. I've trimmed down my cardstock so that the sentiment will fit and then it is applied to the sheet adhesive. 
I'm going to hang on to that top backing paper. Each of the pieces of cardstock backed with the adhesive are die cut with Summer. After I've removed the backing paper, I'm going to line up the two M's at the top of the Adirondack chair. As I curve the two sides of the sentiment around the chair, I make sure that I hold the center of the sentiment firmly in place. And just to make sure that that sentiment's going to stay in place, I put the backing paper on top and burnish it well. These cards are embellished with some pretty pale blue confetti from Studio Cash's Pastel Rainbow Mix. All of the sequins are finished off with Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew, giving them a jewel-like appearance. And that completes these three cards made from one watercolor background featuring Simon Says Stamps Big M Bold Sentiments. And if I had a longer sheet of watercolor paper, I would have made a whole lot more. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I appreciate your visit.